Greetings! This is Reading Sloth and today I'm going to go through my January wrap up. I'm sorry I haven't posted in a while, I got ill and then I got tired. <laughs> um, starting off the year, January was great in terms of numbers. Uh, I read 17 books um, with an average of 384 pages per book. Um, so good in terms of numbers, bad in terms of ratings because even though I got a lot of 4, 4.5s, I didn't get that many 5 stars. Um, so hopefully we can have an upward trend. Um, but without further ado, here are the 17 books <laughs> that I read in January. So starting off I'm gonna go through my graphic novels. I read Moonstruck which is about like a werewolf girl finding love. It was cute, the art style was good but it wasn't really my thing um, so I don't think I'm gonna continue with that series. Um, second of all, Saga. I read the last four volumes that are currently out so I am caught up which is great. I really like the characters and I like the plot. There are lots of surprises but I'm not like fully invested so I think the last one I gave five stars but like they're all sitting around four, 4.5 stars. It's really interesting um, but there's just a lot of jarring stuff that kind of takes me out of it can't fully get invested. Uh, the next two things I read I'm not going to go into too much detail because um, they're Harry Potter related and I know that's a very controversial topic um, but I did read Harry Potter A Year in the Life and I did read Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets the illustrated edition which is beautiful. I would go get it but it's all stacked away. <laughs> um, next on my list is the Terry Pratchett biography. I really had mixed feelings about this one because Terry Pratchett's life is really interesting and there were a lot of sections that were written by Terry himself but obviously he left us too soon. He couldn't write the book how he wanted to write it from start to finish so he had his assistant write most of it uh, whilst he was alive and then finish it afterwards. So a lot of it was really interesting and I enjoyed it but I don't know if his assistant is the best at writing so a lot of it was a bit meandering and wasn't my favourite. Um, next was a really short um, collection of stories. It's Midwinter Murder by Agatha Christie. It's a collection of short wintry murders. Um, I really enjoyed some of them. Some of them not so much so it's like ups and downs so it kind of leveled off 3.5 stars for that. All right, here we go. <laughs> Getting into one of my main goals of the year, which is finishing series. I read The Kingmaker's Daughter, um, which is I think book four or five, probably four, uh, in the Plantagenet and Tudor series. There's like 16 books, so I'm making my way through. Um, this one follows the wife of one of the brothers of the main conflicts in the Cousins War. So seeing things from her point of view um, was really interesting because as a in a historical point of view we don't know much about her. She's very much a sideline character um, who doesn't really have a big part so this was really interesting and it was nice to see a different perspective because all of the books are sort of 
you get to see both sides um strong rivalries um and it, it was it was good i don't think it was my favorite because i don't think she's my favorite character but um it's really intriguing i would definitely if you're into henry the eighth from the tudors and sort of the cousins war which is sort of a prelude to that um i would give the series a go uh it has got some fantastical elements in it um like witchcraft uh so it's not completely historical but like it's mostly historical uh next in my ever continuing goal of finishing series i reread chain of gold which is beautiful um it's less angsty on my reread because obviously i know what's going to happen um and part of the angst is not knowing what's going to happen uh, especially in the romances between the characters but the mystery it was still interesting and i'd forgotten a lot of the smaller details um and again the best part of this series is the characters and the character interactions it's got a strong world building because there's obviously the main six books of the original two trilogies and then you've got other trilogies sort of set at different time periods and so the world just keeps expanding and so you get more and more knowledge um that's all weaves together which i really enjoy so the second book i read was um chain of iron in this series uh for the first time i really like where the character arcs are going i think it's really interesting i can't wait to see what's going to happen to these characters i still have the third one to read my order took a little bit longer to come in than i was expecting and so i still haven't got to it but i am really excited to see where these characters are going to end up um even though i did do a google because obviously we have books set in the future we sort of know who's going to end up with who but these books are some of the most beautiful books that i own as a trilogy next in my completing series i read the next book in the secrets oh, what is it the lost series um series by shannon messenger uh i think it's secrets of the lost cities um i read never seen that series is getting really exciting i think i read like book five um and so these books even though they're middle grade they're like 700 page middle grades so even though the writing's bigger they're still huge books and there's so much happening and the characters are great and the world is really interesting um i feel myself getting more and more invested and i am like almost halfway through the series now uh and i cannot wait to see where all the characters are going um I do feel like there is an unnecessary love square going on. Uh, there's, and when we say square, we don't mean square. Um, it's like one girl and she's got like three guys to choose from. It's getting a bit unnecessary because I just want them all to be friends and, you know, try and save the world. Regular 12, 14 year old lives. <laughs> okay, so next on my list of books that i finished is the secret history this book is dense it doesn't look that thick but when you hold it it's really heavy it is dense it's dense in the writing style and it is dense in the physical aspect of the book this book was way too long <laughs> and one of the chapters is 110 pages and the next chapter is 120 pages and i just don't think chapters should be that long there is 
no considerable considerable reason why this book would be this long and it's not like it had a lot of stuff in it it felt like it just sort of ambled its way through the plot and when I say plot it's a very weak plot it just didn't grip me like it has um with a lot of people who have read this apparently um so I'm glad I've read it but it's not going to be making any of my top book lists next um we took a dip again I read the 10,000 Doors of January now if you like the Starless Sea, the Night Circus, um, any of those kinds of books uh, where it's sort of a bit whimsical uh, and the writing's a bit flowery and it's got more of a purple prose rather than it's got action or you know plot <laughs> then you will definitely like this book a lot. I do not really enjoy the night circus or the star of sea um and so this book was not on my favorite it had some cool ideas some good characters uh, and an interesting plot but it's not one to write home about <laughs> so unfortunately things took a bit of a dip and i managed to s salvage the month by reading a dance with dragons part one and part two which altogether is quite quite thick um i gave both of these five stars i thought it was an excellent ending to what we have and it really makes me want to find out what's going to happen next and it really annoys me that we don't have what's next um so hopefully i will be reading whatever uh George R. 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 Martin books I have left. I've got A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms and I've got A World of Ice and Fire left to read um and then I might have to read something that's outside of A Song of Ice and Fire um on Westeros and then I really don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just gonna be one of those people who just rereads it and just waits for the new books to come out but I love the characters I love where it's going um and I just <laughs> I just want to know what's going to happen to all of the characters and if they're going to be okay uh and what what crazy plot points are gonna happen next it's going to be uh, a good time if we ever eventually get there <laughs> so that's the ups and the downs of my january reading um i probably won't have a february tbr because it is the 21st of february when i'm recording this and so i feel like it's pointless to do a tbr for seven days <laughs> but I will definitely have a February wrap up and hopefully I will have a higher average rating than January. Please let me know what exciting books you read in the month of January and if there's any that you think I might like and happy reading.